Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Are any of you guys doing what I've been doing lately? I've been going through all my older images. Um, I'm one of those that are, I don't delete a lot of photos, even photos that are misses for whatever reason, and I just keep them on my computer. And I'm kind of glad I've done that because over the last year or two, there's been a lot of this so-called AI technology finding its way into photo processing applications. And I've been finding I've been able to salvage Im images that I thought were really unsalvageable. Specifically, I'm talking about a lot of the Topaz plugins, uh, Topaz Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, Gigapixel AI. I have a ton of images that were shot at very high ISO. And in the past, I wasn't really adequately able to remove that ISO without really kind of ruining, blurring out the shot and kind of making it look stupid. Um, also, I have images that are a bit blurry. Sharpen AI has taken care of those. And I have a number of images that I was just too far away and I really had to do or have to do a significant crop on the image. But when you do that, you lose a lot of detail. Well, Gigapixel AI has been taking care of those images. And I just want to share one with you today. A while ago, I was out doing street photography uh, several years ago. I was using the Fujifilm X-T1. And this is a shot that isn't the fault of the technology, meaning the camera I was using. It was the fault of the photographer. I was across the street. You could see the reflection in the window. It was sunny over there. I had my camera set on manual with auto ISO. I manually put in the camera one one thousandth of a second at F11. Now I was over on the sunny side of the street and that worked well. And as I was walking along, I saw this guy in front of his place of business on the shady side of the street. So I crossed over to take his photo and I never changed any of these settings. With this shot, he's standing still. I could have used a slower shutter speed. I could have used a more wide open aperture and the resultant image on auto ISO would not have been at 6400. It would have been at something lower and the noise would have been more manageable. And if I zoom in, you could see that there is a significant amount of noise. So much noise, it's really kind of blurring out his details. And I was very disappointed in myself uh, for screwing up this image. Not only that, I was using single point focus. I wasn't using IAF or anything. As a matter of fact, IAF wasn't even available on the X-T1 yet. The firmware wasn't that advanced yet, so it wasn't even available. So I was using single point focus right in the middle, and you could see I just bullseyed them. So in this, the only shot I got, I didn't really work the scene. I didn't, I did everything wrong, basically. But with that said, with the new Denoise AI, I really could salvage this. And if I do have to do a significant crop, I could even bring it into Gigapixel and take it from there. So let's send it into Denoise. I didn't do anything in Lightroom at all. This is the raw file as is. What I did do is I took any default sharpening that was added all the way down to zero, luminance noise reduction down to zero. I left the color noise reduction at 25 because that uh, Lightroom does a good job with color noise reduction. And I'm not going to crop it or anything. I'm going to send it as is into Denoise AI. So I'm going to right click on it and go down to edit in and go down to Topaz Denoise AI. And with these settings, tip file, and we'll click edit. So we'll send it over into Denoise AI. And I have several, several videos on how to use Denoise AI. But I just want to kind of show in this video how it really does salvage the image. It, I'm really impressed with how well it works. Now there's several different um, AI models. There's four as a matter of fact. Um, as far as the view is concerned, I prefer to use what they call the comparison view, which is this four panel view. This view only allows you to look at any three of those four AI, AI models at one time because the far left hand side is the original image. So you could use it for comparison purposes. Let's zoom in a little more than this. Let's zoom into like 200 and put it right over his face. And the first uh, AI model on the top right is the standard AI model. I found this is the one I use the most. And if I just put it on auto, let it do it, set it on auto, you can see it, it's removed some of the noise, but not like a really great job, let's say. We go over to the bottom left hand side, that's the AI clear mode. And that's about the same, maybe slightly better than the standard mode. The low light mode seems to be the best mode. If I click on that, you can see that's on auto. So the best of these three when set to auto, I might add. And 
this fourth mode isn't being displayed, but it will replace whatever the active mode is. Right now I have the low light mode as active, and if I click here, it will replace it and put it there. Now of these modes, in my experience with Denoise AI, I found that most often the standard mode look, works best when a person is in it, even though it's not quite as good as maybe the clear mode was. But I'll just come in and I'll just, you know, move up, remove noise. Re really, moving it up to 30, it did a nice job, and it's still retaining detail. Now, what I'd like to do is kind of move it around and see, you know, where it seems to work. If I want to recover any original detail, I would move this slider here. But when you do that, you tend to reintroduce noise. You can see that. So you should be very careful with that slider. And uh, there really isn't any color noise in this image because I removed it with Lightroom. So I'm going to take that right down to zero. Now, once I'm kind of satisfied with the settings I have, and usually what I do is I'll put it on auto and then just adjust off auto like I just did. I moved remove noise up. And then what I'll do is I'll move it around a little bit. And I want to look at a dark area, so you have to wait to, it to render, wait for it to render, and look at a dark area and see what it looks like, and also look at a lighter area, like maybe over in here, or maybe something over in here. Like I like to look and see how it removed noise overall, and actually I think it did a great job throughout all the tones of the image, so I'll just use this mode and click Apply. And then, of course, it's going to apply those settings to that TIFF file. So it doesn't, um, even though Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, Gigapixel AI all work on RAW files directly, when you use it as a Lightroom plugin, it doesn't work on the RAW file. It will work on a TIFF file um, that I, as you saw, when I sent it over there, it had those specifications. And then you ret get returned that TIFF file. Let me open up the film strip down here at the bottom. So this is our TIFF file. And let's zoom in. Let's go up to View. And we're going to go down to Lock Zoom Position. Because then we'll go on to the other image. This is the image, the raw file that, you know, before I sent it to Denoise. And there is after Denoise. So you can see you know, what a great job it does. And really, a few years ago, I wasn't able to do that. Now, once I have this done, I could come and edit it um, a little better. I'll put, I'll just pull it down from the top. I'll keep the same um, size ratio of crop, but I just want that top rule of thirds line to go through his eyes. I think that's a better composition. I'll keep him right in the middle. That's fine. He dominates the image anyway. And then I could come in and just do my editing now to to this image is I normally would I'll just do it real quick like here maybe just add a touch of clarity don't like to add too much clarity uh, when a person is in the shot because clarity will really make their features look harsh and I don't necessarily want to do that uh, to this man in this image and vibrance is a better choice over saturation usually if you have a person in the image because saturation will make the skin tones redder and usually don't want that, whereas Vibrance will not do that, but it will bring up the saturation of the other colors. So you can see it doesn't do it as readily, maybe I should say. Just like that, and then really not much more to do to it. I could go down to Effects and just add a darker vignette. And that's it. So that's how I've been going through my images and salvaging them using uh, these new AI tools. Uh, specifically in this video, I'm talking about Topaz Labs. But there are other things coming out. And I'm excited because On1 is coming out with a new noise reduction uh, application that is, you know, quote, AI enhanced. I know those are really just buzzwords. They really don't mean anything. But again, the more competition we have, the better it is for us. Because if more of these um, software uh, publishers come out with uh, software that competes with one another, in the end, uh, it improves everything and will be better off, better off for it. So go through your old images, see things that you may be able to salvage, and um, let me know in the comments below if there was anything you have that was really valuable that you thought was un unsalvageable, you've been able to salvage using any application, not only those Topaz Labs ones. Even ones I don't do videos on, I'd be interested to checking those out as well. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.